Hey there, what is up? And welcome back. And so I've been working on this mix for a little while and I've decided like I would need some some kick and snare samples. So I thought I would uh, show you that process. Um, there's quite a few different ways to do it. Um, personally, I like to have MIDI in there because I can really control exactly what's being triggered. Um, and you know, this, this program is like Slate Trigger, which I'm gonna use to get the MIDI this time, but um, I don't really wanna have it running just on the audio because then I'm not really in control of what's being triggered. And there's a lot of ghost notes happening here as well. And I wanna catch those. So I'm just gonna show you that process real quick. I'm gonna just create a new track under the snare here. I'm gonna just add Slate Trigger. Uh, slate Trigger. Just going to make a copy of this. Solo this one. And we're just going to kind of fine tune the uh, threshold here, make sure we're getting all the hits we want. I'm not going to hear anything because there's no samples loaded up. And let's load up something. It's like a room snare. You can see it's missing some of the ghost notes here, but... Let's tweak the sensitivity a bit. So we're just gonna basically leave that running for the whole snare track. It's gonna generate uh, some MIDI and we'll be able to just drag it into our project and then we can manipulate the MIDI from there, <clears throat> make any changes we want. And um, we can maybe we can use Slate Trigger or we can use Superior Drummer or anything we want to trigger that for the samples. So I'm gonna let that run and uh, I'll catch you at the end. Okay, so it's gone through one pass with the snare there. We're gonna make a new track. Then we can use this feature here, drag on to track. So we just drag this, let's try that again. We have to make sure we drag it all the way to the start of the project if there's some space here. Make sure it's all the way along, otherwise it won't line up. So I'm gonna just drag Slate Trigger down onto this MIDI track, mute that one, and we can check out what we've got. I seem to catch most of it. Um, I didn't see too many missed triggers, but we're gonna go through each one and just double check. Let's just see if this is playing. Might be the wrong MIDI note. Yeah, so let's put it on C1 here, which doesn't actually I don't think this is the same C1, but let's see. Yeah, it's not. I think it's an octave below, is it? C0. Okay, yeah. So how we're gonna check the MIDI is, what I'm gonna do is open up the inline editor so I can see that the MIDI editor on the track here. We're gonna select this looking glass icon here, which gives me just the, the lane 
of active nodes. So there's only one lane here. And we'll just change it to like some, some these kind of drum notes here. And we can kind of just like tab through the top, the track above, and just see the, if it's lining up. It's pretty clear where the transients are here. So this is looking, it doesn't always uh, tab to the right place. So just have to be careful. It's never going to be absolutely on the line. It's impossible for the MIDI. The resolution is it's not really, I can only move it here or here. So, you know, as close as we can get it, that's fine. If we see anything way off, we'll just move it manually. So yeah, we just tab through, keep an eye on everything. Slate does a pretty good job, really. Let's see what this is. Yeah, let's move this one. These look like some ghost notes here. Oops. Okay, so I think we've got most of the main hits there. Let's just check where the ghost notes are. These kind of end parts here. Let's check that first. We can kind of see really which ones are the snare hits. I mean, it's using this uh, really nice feature in Reaper with uh, the spectrograph color here um, on the wave. So yeah, we can see the kind of yeah, these ones here, this one looks like it's a, it's a tom hit. Yeah, that's right. It's just a slightly different color here. That's really helpful. So it looks like it's missed one here. This one here. So we can just add in a note. Here's a tom hit, so we can get rid of that. Same with this one. What's this? Also toms. Just scan through it, check these ones that are the low velocities, they're generally wants to check. Again, toms, so get rid of those. Toms. 
Jones. Ghost notes here. You can see they're also color here. Looks like it's picked them nicely. Yep. This one not. Just gonna keep scanning through back to the start and here we are. Looks like everything is good. Pretty great job, I think, by slate trigger there. But if I left it going, you see it would have triggered some of the tom hits, uh, which I didn't want. So now we have a lot of control here and we probably wanna shape a little bit the, the overall velocities here. I mean, it's, it's, the, the ghost notes generally look low enough. We'll have to see how they trigger. I'm just gonna like move everything just down slightly just so it's not right the max. Yeah, we can see how that goes. snare room trigger um, yeah so once we're happy with that we can go make a selection around the original snare track and we can just um, render this to a stereo stem being time selection. And there we have our room trigger track. And we can keep using the snare, the, the MIDI here for any other layers we want to add. Maybe we want to add uh, something with a bit more body to it. We can just change up the samples here. And we might even want to add in Superior Drummer. Probably it's not gonna Gonna trigger something strange. Yep. Let's just change these to all notes. Find where our, our snare should be. There it is.
of course we can select whichever snare we want, blend that in. There we have it. We can do the same with the kick. And um, yeah, now we've got some samples in there and some samples loaded up. That should do it. <laughs>